All right, we're live. Um, welcome to Artcasters 178. Uh, with uh, with this is the show where we talk about the ins and outs of graphic design, illustration, cartooning, and uh, we have usually a rotating guest. And it's the show that alternates between myself and Scott Strickland's channel. So uh, before we kind of get into the topic and stuff like that, let's just do a quick go around, let everybody know where to find us. Um, you're on my YouTube channel, so obviously you, you've found where to find me. So if you haven't yet, hit subscribe. And then if you're bored after that or you're curious about like, the art I'm going to be working on, um, go to quarterlystories.com and check out my graphic novel there. Or you can go to tapas.io and search for it. Um, it's called Quarterly Stories, and uh, it's an autobiographical comic about faith and mental illness that I hand write, hand letter, and hand ink. And then hand to you hopefully someday in print and it's getting closer and closer to that but until then it's available on those sites so that's where you can find me um scott where can we find your work where can those listeners get your work and and more importantly what is the cost of these crazy packs i keep hearing about on your site well uh, well the one pack that you're probably referring to is totally free i have some other digital packs and those do cost a little bit of money um you can find all that stuff at cirqueworks.com the uh the free one is pretty much up front and center as soon as you go to the website you'll find that if you click on that you can get the comic maker starter kit which is a, a digital toolbox full of things like brushes brushes digital or digital brushes comic book fonts comic book templates word balloons you name it pretty, pretty much everything you need to start creating comics um, and you can use those digitally or some of the things you can print out uh, and, and use traditionally, whatever you want. But, uh, yeah, it's totally free. Just go up there and uh, you just sign up for my, mail my mailing list. And that will also get you some other cool stuff free if you stay on that mailing list. And, and plus tips and hacks and, and advice and, and exclusive videos and all that cool stuff. So that's all at CircWorks.com. Awesome. There's also some. Uh-oh. Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah, so Josh was having some ish internet issues previous to going on, and it looks like those are still might be happening. So <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead. Hopefully, Josh, I see him. He's kind of frozen on my screen. I don't know if he'll be able to jump back on, but I might as well just get, get over to Chris McQuinlan. How's everything down under, Chris? Things are good, man. Things are good. Um, it's been a little while since I've been on, but um, things are just traveling along on a similar path, just working, freelancing, and creating artwork, and rebuilding myself, which is really good. Yeah, I know. I mean, I definitely know what that's like. It seems like, I think, I think you and I probably got laid off around the same time. So it's like, or, or close to the same time, so. Yeah, I think that's the last episode I was on was about us both just losing our jobs and what oh, was next. Was it? Oh, okay, yeah, so, yeah. So yeah, some time has passed and uh, you know, I, I, me personally, I'm at a point where I couldn't be happier. <laughs> um, and it, it sounds like you're, you're just doing tons of stuff. You're keeping busy, but I, I know it's, I know it's a struggle. So hopefully, hopefully you can build that momentum and, and, and you know, we'd all like to, to obviously see you succeed and just keep doing what you love to do. So yeah. Yeah, I'm in like a weird crossroads. Like I'm enjoying doing what I'm doing, but I do miss that little bit of stability. So I'm definitely keeping my eyes open for work, but I'm definitely being far more uh, pickier than what I would normally be. Yeah. I hope yeah. I can find something that will, you know, cater to my artistic needs, but also be able to just you know, not have to stress about, you know, where the next paycheck's coming in. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm in a I'm in a position right now where I've got I've got a uh, one client in particular that's an ongoing client that that so that adds some sort of stability, but I don't want to you know put all my eggs in one basket. So, uh, but I have other stuff going on too as well. So hopefully you know you can find find something kind of like that because I mean even like full time jobs as we talked about before, I mean that that stability can be fleeting because they're not you know. I, I've worked so many of those jobs and I've always ended up getting laid off. Usually uh, no later than the third year mark. Um, and, you know, quite frankly, I just, I'm just tired of investing in companies only to have them either go under or just figure out that they're going in a different direction or whatever the case is and, and yeah. getting, getting laid off. So um, yeah, it's just a different world, different world. So, so, so far um, I'm happy and I'm, I'm doing, 
uh, you doing my thing and and it allows me a lot more time to work on the stuff I love. So, so yeah, that's all. Awesome. Yeah. So we should, hopefully we should all be so lucky. Uh, I got a text from Josh. He says his uh, internet cut out again. So hopefully he'll be back. But so, um, so when I invited you on and thanks for coming on, Chris, cause I know it was kind of a, a last minute thing. I know Josh had, you know, Josh is hosting tonight and he's got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, so, so he, you know, he, he said, Oh man, could you, could you find a guest for me? And I'm like, well, who, who could I call? And I, I just finished watching some of your videos and everything. And I was like, I haven't talked to Chris in a while. So it sounds like he's doing some cool stuff. I want to get him on. Um, and, uh, and, and when I ask you usually, and usually if, if, if you guys aren't familiar, usually what we'll do is, um, unless we have something pressing we want to talk about, we usually try to leave it up to our guests or at least give them the first at bat and crack at it as to what they want to talk about. Um, so you had mentioned, uh, collaborations now, <laughs> Now I know you're working. I mean, you're doing a collaboration on your comic and everything, and I've I've done stuff here and there, um, but I think you know, uh, primarily Josh and I. Um, I don't think we have as much experience with collaboration. So hopefully this is, hopefully this is going to be all you know too much on you, Chris. But but um, I think you might have to kick it off a little bit and just kind of let uh, let me know what what brought up that particular topic and. Um, uh, just so Josh says he's trying to lock back on. So, but we got it. We got it. We, we can hold in the fort until we can do this. Back we can do this. What's, what's that, Chris? We've got this. We've yeah, got yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, um, yeah, I, didn't, I didn't think I was going to be hosting tonight, but maybe I might have to. <laughs> At least, uh, yeah. What, it's such a weird thing how this works because, you know, even though Josh's internet is out, I think we're still going on which is so weird because it's been hosted on this channel. So I don't know how all that works or the technology behind it, but, but anyway, so, so Chris, you wanted to talk about collaboration. I know you, you, now you, you work on a book where you're the artist and you have a writer or do you guys also collaborate on the writing or I guess yeah. we can get into how that dynamic works, but, um, but I'm just curious, uh, you know, kind of why you wanted to talk about that and everything. And Josh is back. We're, we've been holding down the fort, Josh. So we're just getting yeah. into the topic. And I wanted to kind of find out from Chris why he wanted to talk about collaboration. So I so love what are your it. thoughts, Chris? Well, primarily, when you messaged me, I was uh, I just finished up reading the latest script of Monkey Junk, which was provided to me by the writer. Um, and I was like, oh, okay, this could be a cool topic. And um, also just coming off the back end of the anthology, uh, which is, I, I've got a four-pager in that as well. And I took that opportunity to write the four-pager myself because I, I just, it's been a while I've written the characters in Monkey Junk. And then just sort of looking at the two different ways that sort of I prepared the comic for myself. And then he's come up with this full script for page three. And I was like, oh, this could be a really interesting thing to, for people to talk about, especially I know most of the 100s uh, tend to work, um, you know, they do 100% of the work when it comes to comic books. Um, and interestingly enough, I was talking to Mike, uh, I think it was yesterday or the day before, about, you know, he's doing some comic book work now that he's sort of more in a freelance situation. And, you know, he was doing breakdowns of how, you know, the different options that he can offer his clients whether it's pencils and inks and things like that and yeah just all those um things sort of you know have been in my mind you know collaborating with other creators rather than just being like that sole person um yeah i thought it'd be a cool topic to talk about yeah definitely so i i don't want to uh, you know put too much pressure on but on your light, latest vlog I, it sounded like you were a little behind on the anthology so is that gonna is that gonna happen yes yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm just Putting the final touches on now, so Mike's been a, a champ, and he's oh awesome. Sounds like you really rallied then, because it sounded like you said you're about halfway done, and if you're if you're putting the final touches on, then you really <laughs> you really must have worked some overtime. Yeah, yeah, it was like that weird thing where I had that many um, that much client work that every time I tried to get onto it, yeah, um, I mean I took precedence, and as far as I was concerned, like I said in the vlogs, like uh, I need to pay the bills. I can't be doing the free work when I need right. to. You know keep food on the table so yeah, definitely. Uh, just wrapped up two big jobs sort of at the beginning of this week and it allowed me to just sort of churn through um and most of like all the, i always do all my lettering and everything first anyway so i just have to finish the art up dump the artwork in and then i'm done so um 
Yeah, and like most of the pencils I've done, it was just the inking. So. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I mean, I'm working on the cover right now. I got it all sketched out, and I got to start printing it out and inking it. So, um, so I, 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 Mike's, I saw Mike in the chat. Mike's in the chat. So hopefully he's not. <laughs> he's probably like, because he hasn't heard from me because I've been I've been busy, but I have been working on it, Mike, and it's uh, it's coming along, and I, I'm really happy with it. So, so hopefully yeah. I. I, I Got a little more time and it can ink this thing and careful, careful guys. Gaz is gonna show up at your doorstep. Yeah. Yeah. Be like, you like the kneecaps? <laughs> okay, but, uh, it was funny because I've been stressing out and like I didn't want to admit defeat. And uh, Mike just messaged me a couple of weeks ago. It's like, are you gonna? Are you okay? You're gonna? Are you gonna hit the mark? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. And he's like, you know, this is when we found out about the uh, the extension, and then. Uh, he's like, well, just be careful because Gaz will be on a boat and he will he will be coming for you. And I was like, I'll get to hang out with Gaz. That'd be great. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> so I don't know, Josh, I kind of took over, but we were, uh, I don't know if you wanted to mention how you wanted to set up as far. I don't know what kind of, I was telling Chris that, you know, he wanted to talk about collaborations. And I, I, I know myself, I don't have as much experience with, collaborations as far as on comics um and i don't know if you have either but uh, i don't know what what your thoughts are on that uh josh so it, it's kind of uh, particularly pertaining to comics um I, I took a graphic novel that was like an 80 page graphic novel that i did for this client and it was one of the worst exp Oh, no. oh man, here we go. This is gonna this is gonna be a rough one, boys and girls. Um, I'm looking forward to that story too. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I I'm gonna just finish Josh's story. <laughs> no, I actually haven't heard that story, so I don't know. <laughs> but that was good because I think when I sent out the uh, when I sent out the newsletter, um, I said I think I said uh, you know uh, collabing with people can be like an awesome experience or it can be your worst nightmare. So I think Josh is going to come from the worst nightmare standpoint. Um, yeah. And hopefully, hopefully yours is an awesome experience. Um, so, so we were, we were getting into that. You were talking about uh, you're working with a writer and everything. So how, how does that dynamic work? Um, I'm, I'm really lucky. With monkey junk. I'm really lucky that I'm, I was friends with the writer first mm -hmm. and, was actually his first venture into writing comic books so prior to that he um, used to doing like um, playwrights and things for you know he did a lot of local stuff he's an actor as well um, and we were developing and we still are developing kill the hero and he did a lot of the writing for that and doing all okay. of the technical side so during this the process of doing kill the hero I um, would just sort of throw ideas of um, monkey junk at him and just get him to you know, just throw ideas around and really just sort of help develop the world that I was sort of struggling to build already. And then once I got to a point, so it, anyone who follows me uh, will know that I did originally write chapter one of Monkey Junk and I'd started it. And I'd gotten to a point where um, I couldn't do it because I was so busy and then had a, the opportunity to reflect back. And I was like, I don't actually like this. Like, I, I feel like it can be a lot more. And then I approached him and said, would you be willing to write it? You know everything anyway. So I don't really need to, um, I don't know I can trust you with it. And he was more than willing to jump on board. Uh, and because this is his first step into writing comics, we work quite heavily together in developing it, uh, or at least in the first two chapters. Now he's pretty much off and running, just doing his own thing. And, uh, you know, he's at a point beyond the story of where I was. Like, we, he knows what the end goal is and now, He's filling in the blanks with his own ideas, which is really cool. And I can, I'm can i really happy for, to just let him go. But we had so much development and uh, we live close together so we could actually catch up for a coffee and talk about the comic book, write down ideas. Um, I could draw while he was coming up with, you know, characters. And, uh, we, you know, it was a really pure collaborative effort during this comic book. Um, rather than I've worked for, with writers before, it was purely... Um, just correspondence where they would send me the script, I would send them pictures. Um, I did, it was like a children's comic that I did a long time ago, and I'm not super proud of it. Uh, it was called Bad Robot, and uh, that was a lot more rigid. The feed, uh, it was like, you know, relying on it, was almost like freelance work. You would send them the artwork, and the, they would provide feedback. 
and it was yeah you know, i i had a lot more difficulty with that whereas now i'm in more of a a nice marriage i suppose with the writer that i work with um and yeah I, yeah it, it's really nice to work with someone rather than having the additional stress and because I, i'm the original creator of the story i can i know that i'm going to have a lot of passion for this going into the future and having someone else who has that same passion and also pushes me too um it, you know i'm it's not just me on the line like if i stop then you know for whatever reason then i'm just letting myself down um and my readers but there's also this other creator who's put all of his time and effort in as well and that drives me and that's really nice too that's all I'm, I'm like super envious actually because it sounds like you found a perfect fit and because I, I i remember when you first because originally because i know you were doing monkey junk on your own now did it did is it the same story or is it just basically you guys kind of revamped it yeah so what happened is i did the first script i, I wrote the whole first script which i did within like the 100 day challenge and i think i'd started i think i dropped eight pages of that actual comic book and then came back like i had you know for whatever my own like certain reasons i'd stopped and then once I approached him, I said, well, look, here's the script. Like, this is what I'd originally written. Um, once we were actually, you know, really getting serious about doing this. And he's like, all right, cool. He took that and he pretty much just ripped it apart and then came up with, um, look, almost a synopsis for the first six chapters. So this is what I want to do. And uh, he pretty much taken that first, the, the whole first script and stretched it out over two books really fixed up the pacing, really fixed up the character development. Um, so what happens within like the first eight pages in my original script, he'd managed to pull out over 20 pages and it was just far nicer. It um, gave you a lot more time to feel something for the characters, whereas mine just was almost rushed because I wanted to get to the action, whereas he was like, no, 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 we need to do this. Uh, progressively we've got six issues let's use those six issues as wisely as possible that's and awesome. that was really nice that's awesome so so I, I definitely want to get back to that so since josh is here before uh, yes. he gets out again but but so so josh uh chris was just telling me how he's got this great working relationship with his writer yeah uh, and in contrast you were about to tell a story about how what a nightmare <laughs> collaboration you've had so mm -hmm. let's just get both sides of the coin yeah, I mean, the worst, most nightmare collaborator, I'd say, is Time Warner. So <laughs> like, it, if you guys do want to send hate mail to Time Warner, it's literally the worst internet I've ever had. Um, so if I don't get cut off, um, I just I got hired by these guys who were like ex-doctors who had worked at a um, at like a rehab clinic in Florida. And they had this kind of tell-all story that was – like veiled references of different celebrities that they had done treatment on. And uh, I had to sign like an NDA and stuff like that. So that's as far as I can get into it. But I can say it was just, it was a nightmare experience. It was like, it took up probably about three months of nonstop, like 16 to 20 hour days to just kind of execute this terrible script. And, um, and I was just flying by the seat of my pants and getting paid like pennies for it. I mean, like the page rate wasn't bad in comics world, but um, I had to turn down so many illustration jobs that like a couple of them had I taken like three or four illustration jobs, I could have gotten the same amount, you know? Um, so it's like, it, it was one of those things where from that experience, I was like, I don't really think I want to do comics that aren't my own or that I don't believe in um, for money because it's just, the the pay is terrible. It's just, um, it's it's an awful experience. Um, yeah. Funny story though, those, those are a client that like we had the payments broken in all these sections. Um, and they actually skimped out on the last uh, pay. Ugh. Um, and then like, but it was such a small amount. It's not really, wasn't really worth taking them to court for, you know? Um, Cause I had already gotten the majority of it, but you know, had I taken them to court, I, I would have gotten it. Um, but then it's funny, like a year and a half later, that client contacted me going like, 
hey, so all those uh, like print worthy files that you sent us, do you still have those? And I was like, nope. Because <laughs> I'm like, you, you know that last bit of pay that you owed me? Do you still have that? <laughs> and um, and they never contacted me again. But I was like, that is poetic justice right there. So yeah. they somehow lost the files that they thought they had. Um, I don't know what they were planning on doing with it, but that was one of the worst clients I ever had. I'm sure there's better experiences for people, but um, for me, like comics are worthwhile when they're fun and when there's something you believe in. So if you collaborate with somebody, I'd pick really wisely. Yeah, I, I, I did collaborate with comedy writers for this anthology comic called The Devastator that ran for about 15 issues. I used to do a lot of like little short comics, like two or three pagers um for like we had amanda on the show amanda meadows like uh she works at lion forge now but she used to run that and so i i even collaborated with her on one i think she wrote one um and that was fun because they're comedians so they were and, and they were really good comedians so like they uh they wrote good material you know a lot of them wrote for like mad magazine and stuff like that so they knew how to write for cartoonists and in that case it was kind of like I would just get a script and then I'd kind of suggest ideas visually. Um, they'd have some visual suggestions in it. It mostly looked like just a regular script. Um, and then I did some self-written ones and stuff for them too. But I, I, I'm open to collaboration. Um, but I think one of my draws to comics is like the, the same thing that gets a lot of indie cartoonists into comics. I like that it's one of the few mediums where you don't need a whole team to do it like maybe to do it monthly you would but um but i kind of like the individual nature of it does that make sense yeah yeah definitely well i think yeah. i think i think one of the things that that chris kind of brought up is that you know and i think that's that the best probably advice is that um and it doesn't always have to be this way but but the fact that you guys knew each other so well i think that that's probably you know and assuming you both have you know the drive to make it happen because you know i know just even like back when i was in school where we'd have that class project there there was always like one person that was pulling their weight and the rest of them really weren't so as long as you got people that are are passionate about the same thing especially since you kind of created it the fact that your writer got so invested in it and came up with all these ideas and and yeah. um and has you know also has a sense of ownership on the, the property as well yeah um that's, I mean, it seems like just the fact that you have worked with each other on other things and, and um, I think that's the way to go. And like I said, I'm kind of envious because um, I kind of like a situation like that. I, I haven't dealt with that as much on the comics front, but I know just like recently I've been, I've got a few projects that, uh, that I, you know, that I'm trying to like brainstorm and come up with ideas and it's a little hard to brainstorm yourself. So, I mean, there were some things that I kicked around with uh, both Josh and Corey um, and they gave me some, some great input and that's all we, and you know, so many great ideas come from that. I, I know like even yeah. with the, even with the uh, cover to uh, the one, 100 anthology, which I'm still going to keep kind of keep under wraps. I'm not going to give too much away yet, but um I was really struggling with that, you know, I, I mean, up the whole, I mean, it wasn't the, the whole time I was working on the comic and everything, I'm trying to come up in the back of my head. I'm like, well, what can I do for the cover? What's going to be a, and I, you know, there were some points where I kind of knew that I wanted to do an homage like EC comics, which is sort of what I'm doing. But I, you know, I just like, how do I take these two things that are so like almost like diametrically opposed, which I guess is part of the charm, but the, the werewolves and the unicorns, how do I make that work? And, yeah. um, and just, you know, when, when Corey and I were out traveling and everything, we were just talking about it. And he had some, you know, he had some ideas and ultimately, you know, I, I think it was me who probably came up with the idea, but I don't think I would have arrived at that idea without uh, Corey's input and kind of, you know, yeah. him him offering other suggestions. I'm like, okay, that's yeah. I don't know. I don't know quite sure about that, but there's a kernel of something in there. And then from from one thing to another, I mean, I came up with this idea that I really liked, and I'm just having a blast illustrating it. So um, there's actually something to be said for. Uh, having those brainstorming ideas and hearing a lot of things that don't appeal to you because you can eliminate those quite quickly. Yeah. So if you were trying to come with them up with them on your own, then 
you know, you'll probably sway a little bit more towards it. But when someone else says it, you're like, no, no, I don't like that. It's easier to sort of push it aside. Yeah, and it's like always, like even that's what they say because like when you have like these, the blue, you know, Pixar talks about the blue sky meeting where you know, there's there's never a no or a bad idea because even even ideas like even if it's the worst idea, that could in a roundabout way, you know, lead you to the best idea. You know, yeah. so yeah. it's you know the whole idea of just throwing different things out there and you know. And like I said, also, you know, Corey and I were talking about, uh, and I mean, if I actually, there's this project, couple projects that I'm, I, I'm pitching. So if they happen, I might, have, might have to, you know, have somehow compensate Corey somehow, some way or another, or, or, or something. But because he came up with some really good ideas, I'm like, oh man, that's brilliant. I gotta, I gotta use that. So, um, but uh, yeah, without that, I mean, I, and that's one thing I really want to start doing is like. Um, I was so I was listen. I listened to this podcast called The Honest Designers, and um, and one of the guys I kind of know. Um, I work with Tom Ross, who who runs Design Cuts. Um, he's kind of helped mentor me in some things, and we've worked together. Um, I've he's he's used my some of my digital products and bundles and things like that. So I talked a little bit him a little bit here and there, um, and I got to meet him at Creative South, but. Um, but they were doing the, that podcast that they do. Um, it just started off as a mastermind session where four artists would get together, four designers or creatives would get together and just kind of talk about things. And they thought, you know what? We should really share this. I mean, this is great stuff. We could share this as a podcast. So I don't know. I mean, I, I and, and, you know, Josh and Corey and I, we kind of, we, we, you know, when we're not, you know, after or before we go live with either the art check or the art casters, I mean, we talk about stuff like that, but I really like the idea of just these mastermind sessions where you get some really creative heads involved and, and bounce all these ideas back and forth because, man, I mean, it's like, you know, obviously two heads are better than one. And, you know, so even though I haven't done a lot of collaboration um, and I've been burned on collaborations, kind of like Josh has, I don't want that to deter me from from you know trying to do stuff like that in the future because they you know a good collaboration can really be great it's, but it's got to be you you know you just got to be careful you know and, and be wise about how you go into that yeah, yeah yeah like um one collaboration i'm involved in that doesn't have to do with comics is like you know i'm i'm currently just playing in a band again just for fun and that's like one of the most collaborative processes you can have and if you find the right group of people, it's fun because when you're writing music, it's just like you kind of hear it and it just sounds right. It gels. And like when it's working, like everyone in the room is kind of feeling it. Like and if, if so, you can throw out like something you kind of think sounds cool. And if nobody's like into it, if you're with the right group, you can just toss it away and kind of go with the next thing. You all kind of throw in ideas and you end up going in directions you wouldn't on your own. And they're yeah. much more interesting and sometimes more challenging than something you try. So I think that's one of the biggest benefits is of, of collaboration with the right people. You want to make sure you have like shared aesthetics uh, of some kind, you know, but, um, but I mean, if you have a similar objective, but you have different taste, like there's inevitably some different taste in there. And what's interesting about that is like in that process, you can each push each other to become better which is a really cool thing. Like I see that on a daily basis as an art director with my team um, where like some of the best designers, like if they're sitting next to like a junior, that junior suddenly starts doing a lot better because there's like this mentorship that happens and there's a challenge that happens and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and, and so like there is something to be said for work in teams and, and there is this weird, like, like, kind of i think this ties into what scott was saying but it's like there's this weird thing that happens when you succeed as a group or as a partnership as opposed to as an individual because like if i really kick ass on a page i just kind of have myself to high five or like maybe i'll talk to Corey on a 48 hour art check give him a virtual high, high five or I'll talk to you know Scott on 48 hour art check on Monday or on Wednesday or today, like on, on art casters and get a virtual high five. But it's like it's not quite the same as like if you're working together and achieving something together, 
where you you get to kind of bond in that it's it's definitely a weird cool thing and i i i, I am a little envious of it too i just want a collaborator who will do all the boring work like scanning and <laughs> you know clean up yeah, I was like, actually, um, talk. I mean, th this might go a little more into kind of like a mentor mentee relationship as opposed to um, collaboration. But that's that's sort of it is that's a collaboration as well. But um, I have a you know, an a kind of up and coming artist that follows me, and you know, he supported me. He's bought stuff for me and everything, and it, he's come out to see me at, at like shows and stuff. But he reached recently reached out to me and basically, and he's local and he, he said, you know, if you need any help with your Kickstarter for filling or anything, just let me know, which, which, you know, I've heard about people doing it. And, and that really was like the perfect situation because when you hear about stuff like this and I've heard, I think I've heard Jake Parker talk about this before um, about how, uh, you know, the best way to approach somebody as far as, you know, some sort of a kind of mentor relationship or like a um, almost like a uh, like an intern type thing or whatever um, is pretty much what he did. I mean, first of all, like I said, he it wasn't like he's just, you know, just reached out to me and said, you know, or is asking for things. One thing he's offering to help me. Second thing, he's already you know, supported me. He's bought, you know, bought stuff from my store and everything. He's come out to see me and everything. So, I mean, um, if you're ever in a situation where you, you, there's somebody like that, that you want to work with, I mean, that's, that, that's really a good kind of, um, you know, uh, roadmap to kind of follow, you know, first, you know, just don't jump in and say, Hey, you know, what can you do for me? Can you help me out? Can you give me tips and stuff on this? Or can you teach me how to do stuff like this? Um, but you know, this is somebody who honestly, you know, likes what I do, appreciates what I do, supports what I do and has offered to help me. And it's like, yeah, yeah why not? Why, you know, and, you know, so I'm, you know, if he, if he's willing to kind of help me out that I'm more than willing to kind of give him some advice or whatever and everything. So that's kind of, it's kind of a cool thing. Um, but that's, you know, that's a, as far as finding, um, people to collaborate with. That's, that's, I think that's an awesome way to go about it. Um, you know, even if it's, the, even if you're kind of more at the same level, like if you're not looking to sort of, you know, you know, get advice and things if you're, but you know, first, you know, show some support, you know, talk with them, you know, in chats and get to know them and everything. And don't just like, mm -hmm. Hey man, you want to you work on this project, you know, or I got this project. I'd love, love to have you, uh, you know, draw it or whatever, you know, so. Yeah. Thinking about anything that I've ever done with another creator, it's always been someone that I've known for an amount of time, whether we've met online or whether we've met in person, it's someone that I also either, you know, respect as an artist or I can see that they sort of respect me as an artist and then sort of approach the idea rather yeah. than, you know, the amount of times you get, oh, hey, can you just do my comic? I'm like, I don't even know you from a slice of cheese. <laughs> You know, yeah. uh, like you guys would know working freelance, like some of the clients that you can get are horrible to deal with. And, you know, this would be, could be the same situation, just someone who's super controlling and doesn't give you breathing room or, you know, wants a million changes all the time. Whereas someone that you've got a connection with, a relationship with, uh, are much easier to work with. Yeah. It doesn't work out that way. <laughs> And they actually, you know, if that person knows you, then they know how to ask for changes without being a dick, you know, and they know, like, they'll know your personality. So they'll know if you're phoning in or if you're like really giving an effort, like it, oh, yeah. it, it's different when it's a friend, because when it's a friend, it's like, at least my personality is like, you know, I, I usually want to do the best work I can for my friends, you know, um, so it's like that also creates like a really neat scenario too, where, you know, um, and it also is just a hell of a lot more fun to work with people you like, you know, I mean, that's, that's a huge thing. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't become sort of business when you're co having a conversation or, you know, doing, yeah. you know, the mart work. It's like, Hey, I finished these two pages. How you going? How's the family? It's, you know, it is, it's a nice relationship. And then once the book's out, you can sort of enjoy it a little bit more as well, rather than just do the handover and see you later. 
Yeah, and I was realizing like that's something I do envy from that sort of partnership is like the idea of you can get more like on a crass level, you know, it's just like you can actually get more help with marketing too because it's yeah. not just a solo effort, you know. Well, with uh, Monkey Junk 1, for the most part, I did a lot of the marketing work and did, you know, the shows and, you know, deal with the comic shops, etc. And then the writer just sort of stood back for the most part because he wasn't really into it. And then we did uh, Indie Comic Con, which was at the very end of last year. And I said, you have to come. Just come along, hang out at the table. I think it was like a six-hour day. Uh, and after the end of that day, we were driving home because we went in together. And he's like, that was the best thing ever to actually see people picking up the comic and reading it and appreciating it and just seeing people who have already read it come just to compliment us and talk about the writing or the artwork or how it works together. Like he, you know, together we got to experience that whole process. So not just the creation, but the end game of it all. Yeah. And that, like for me, like I've already experienced it, but to then experience his experience was just yeah. awesome was awesome and now he's like oh, i can't wait to do the next one and then you know we did a launch for number two and he's like yes yeah, sweet i'll be there you know now he's invested further again and you know it's nice to be able to do that that's very awesome but yeah like i've had i wouldn't say horror stories but i've had a couple of bad ones like more on the controlling side of things people who are dealing with like and i would be the same i think if i was working with someone on with monkey junk uh but people who are just very in love with their own creations that they don't they want someone else to do their work for them but they want it done in a very specific way and they can't sort of um they can't deliver that idea that it's like you have to do x y and z specifically and then when you sort of go on your own creative path and send it back they go no 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 this isn't what i wanted at all and that's really hard to deal with and that's yeah. probably avoid working with people that i don't know as well yeah i understand that one it's like the i'll know it when i see it kind of problem where it's like well yeah. you know, in your head it might look a certain way but if you don't communicate that to the artist you're hiring you're going to be surprised by the results, you know? Yeah, yeah. And two, I, I, I like to assume that anyone who's going to hire me to do work or collaborate with is they're familiar with the work that I do. So yeah. when they the work that fits within that bill, um, like, you know, I've had people like, oh, no, it's meant to be more realistic. I'm like, that's not the artist that I am. I don't know why you've put, got me on this project if that's what you wanted. Because some yeah. people don't do the research. Some people just want to get an artist that will say yes to doing their project. You've got to be careful with that too. And you see, like, I don't know, are you guys uh, members of, like, a lot of those Facebook groups, like comic creators and things like that? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I've got a few different things that I'm involved in. Yeah, like, I constantly see people just be like, oh, I'm just looking for an artist. And I'm like, people will just throw their hands up and, you know, go, yeah, I'll take the work, I'll take the work. And I'm like, it just seems like such dangerous ground especially those who are willing to charge pittance as well for it. Like, you know, I'll do your comic for 20 bucks. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. Like, yeah. If I was that writer, I'd be cautious again on that side of it. Like, I don't know if I want to work for someone who's working that cheap. Yeah. You'd be surprised, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I would stay away from stuff like that, but I mean, I, I I'm always an advocate of, you know, if you want to make comics, you don't have to have somebody, but you know, just do it yourself. You know, it's it's so much better. But so uh, yeah, so I mean, as far as you know, working with the uh, as far as comic books and everything, um, and you know, obviously, obviously, even work th working with clients on on whatever is also sort of a collaborative effort a lot of times and you know i i for one i prefer it when the client is involved in the project um other than just like i mean there's there's something we said for for the client that says like man just do whatever you want um but if if especially if it's a if it's a project that uh that i'm really into and this is something i'm trying to do right now with a couple of these projects that i'm proposing or these you know uh 
projects that I'm looking to, you know, kind of get going and, and uh, you know, in, in doing so, I'm doing a proposal for, but one of the things I'm doing more of now is actually trying to only take projects that are, that are really intriguing to me and like, and not only just like, because in the past there's been a lot of times where somebody comes to me and like, oh, we need a logo design and, and this is what the company is. And um, like, okay, just, and just, you know, on first glance, oh, okay, so you do this. Um, yeah, we can do a cool logo that that I think kind of fits your company. But but now I'm trying to kind of like dive deep into what actually, you know, what's their target market? What, what you know, what are their problem points? What all, all these different things and really get just even more of a marketing uh, from a marketing standpoint, because that get that that informs me a little more. So when I do do the designs, I have all that stuff in my mind, and I think it's going to be you know a lot more of a value uh, to the like the customer rather than just oh here's here's something that looks pretty you know yeah. so um, so and 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 doing so you know I can charge a lot more because I'm, I'm tr one thing I'm trying to do is is charge not only for the design but also for my experience and my thinking and my, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, so, uh, one of the, one of the proposals, I mean, the first part of it is just, it's, it's, it's not even, there's not even any design involved. It's just, you know, it's just analyzing everything and coming up with the plan. So, and that's something yeah. I really haven't done before in the past, but that's, you know, that, that is a form of collaboration because you're, I'm, I'm trying to get to know the client better, know what their pro product is and, and all that kind of stuff. And when they do have input and when they do care enough about their, their project to, to be involved. And also, um, cause a lot of times when the client just comes to you and like, it's like they want, if they, if they're, if they are one of these people that is just looking for somebody to do it on the cheap, um, I mean, what does that say about their company that they don't care enough to invest in their own company to, you know, spend the time, spend the time and the money to, uh, to hire somebody who could really do a good job as opposed to, Oh, this guy's, you know, just the cheapest guy we could find. Um, so, but, uh, but yeah, I do, I am, I'm am looking forward to getting more involved in collaborations on even, even working with clients and things like that. Yeah. I think that's a good point. Um, you know, I, I have one weird question, it's like kind of back to comics a little bit. But um, Scott, if you were to collaborate on a comic, what side would you want to be on? Would you want to be on more of the writing side or the drawing side? That That's interesting you asked that because I, in some, I mean, he would think my natural, in, or my natural inclination would be, you know, I'd like to work with a writer and then, than do the art, but I think I might like to do the writing and work with an artist. For one, I think I can do, I, I've got so many ideas and in order, I mean, it just takes way longer to draw those ideas than it does to, you know, to write them. And that's why writers can work on, you know, a handful of books while usually an artist can only work on one. But, but yeah, I wouldn't mind, mind doing, you know, doing a book where I was kind of the writer and I was working with an artist because I would love, I kind of like to see how other artists would interpret my, my ideas. So, uh, or, you know, or do something like have, I think I, I, even if, you know, or it could be something where I come up with an idea, I, I hire uh, an artist to do the, you know, maybe the penciling and then maybe I do the inking. So I still have some sort of a, uh, you know, or maybe I can do some of the preliminary sketches or we can work on the concepts together. But, but, you know, I guess that's an interesting question, Josh, because I don't really hadn't given it much thought. But when you mention that, I kind of, you know, I mean, it could definitely go both ways. I could definitely see myself working with a writer and then doing the art. But, um, but I think I might like to just take some idea, some of these ideas I have and, you know, work with another artist. Of course, you know, I'm not the kind of person that's, really that wants to work with somebody unless I can, I can compensate them. So, and I'm not really at that position right now, but if I, if I get to a point, um, I definitely, that's something I would like to do. What about yeah, you guys? I'm kind of, I think I'm kind of in a similar boat where I, I would be really fascinated with the idea and the exercise of like writing, just writing the comic. Um, and maybe comping it out, you know, just doing like rough, rough, like thumbnails. Um, and just letting an artist go to town on it and like trying to fight the instinct, you know, the art director instinct in me of like, 
change that color, like, you know, fix that arm, that kind of stuff. Um, and just see where the artist goes with it, you know, because I, I have to say that would be really interesting to kind of see because I'm so used to the process of kind of um, either getting a brief from a client and fulfilling it or creating my own thing and then kind of seeing it through to fruition. But it, it would be, I, I think I'm kind of with you on that, Scott. Like, I, I, that's why I kind of asked because <laughs> I was thinking about it and I was like, I think I'd be more on the writing end of that um, if I were to do it, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it would be fun too because then I could like exercise some writing muscles of things that maybe I'm not so like specialized in, you know? And, and work with an artist that's a little different or something. I don't know. It just sounds fun. What about you, Chris? I mean, obviously you're right now in your situation where you're doing the, the illustrations and uh, you, you're working with a writer, but would you ever consider doing the opposite where you do the writing? And Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I've been thinking about doing, I love world building. It's probably my favorite thing in comics. And I want yeah. to, I've been building this world in my head for something else completely different, but I, I know that I wouldn't be able to do the comic and the idea has sprung into my mind of writing a few short stories and, you know, sort of sending it off to a few artists and getting them to sort of build it. But I think if I was to do it, I'd still need a bit of control on some of the characters. So I'd probably have a lot of um, concepts ready for them to be like, here's the characters, here's the world, here's the, uh, the some environments and concept art and then let them go crazy with it. So I'm definitely open to stylistic choices and letting them go that way, but I think I'd still have have a little bit of control over um, some of the character design and things like that. But definitely would love to do it, and I think I'd love to do it on like a, a grander scale of having multiple artists rather than one artist on one big project. To, to really um, look, I've seen it before. Um, I can't, nothing comes to mind at the moment. I think Animatrix is like the only thing that I can think of where it's one world with multiple artists developing their own stories within that world and just seeing everyone's take on it would be really, really cool. And we've, yeah. we've even, we've talked about doing it for monkey junk as well. of even hiring writers and artists and just sort of pairing groups together to do their own sort of offshoot stories within the same universe. That would be cool too. And then just sort of directing all of those different art, um, collaborative artists would be really fun. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm big on, you know, I like the, the world building or just even like a lot of times for me, my favorite part is just coming up with a cool concept, you know, and sometimes I don't even have to make, turn it into a story. But if I come up with a kind of a, a cool, like, oh man, this type, you know, if I combine these two things or whatever, um, that would be kind of a cool thing or, or just whatever. But I like, I just like, sometimes I like those things that you can put into a, a like a pitch and it's like, and that's like kind of sparks your interest. Like, Oh man, that sounds kind of cool. Um, so I, I love that kind of stuff. I've got a lot of that, you know, probably more times that more than I'll ever be able to, to illustrate. So, I mean, maybe I should try to try to work with people and, and do that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah well, sorry. Oh, no, I, I was just going to say, like, it's funny because I, I like concepting and stuff, but I think the reason I was, like, so, like, I'm actually really intrigued because is because, like, I really dig um, doing, like, dialogue and pacing and, like, I actually like all the gritty stuff, like, once the structure is there. Like, it's really fun to me to try to, like, find a way from point A to point B and tie up all the threads and stuff. Like, I actually like that. Um, and it's like, that's the weird, I don't know if that's weird. Cause it's like, it, I don't know. It's like, I like the big concept stuff, but I like the nitty gritty details of the, of the execution of the story. Not like, not artistically as much as the writing process. It's weird. Whereas with art, the art, I really like the finishing and then the beginning. <laughs> I don't tend to like the middle that much. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah no I've, I've been toying with the idea again like i just don't like the idea of jumping into a whole other comic book or even like a picture book or anything but i've been wanting to just do concept art and develop the world through concept art and then put to get that together in like an art book so it's almost like receiving an art of book 
for something that doesn't actually exist, but it's just all the ideas and stories sort of live within that. And you just go, well, here's all the, the towns that exist in this world and just write, do quick write-ups, almost as if what I would normally do for, you know, a comic itself, but then just more fleshed out. That would be a lot of fun. And I'd feel a lot more relaxed doing that too. And then if I wanted to expand on it, then that almost becomes the source book for anyone I, you know, get to work on that. That'd be fun. That's really smart. It's dangerous. Like I've been um, getting into Dungeons and Dragons lately and it's been really um, dangerous because all I'm thinking about is world building now, constantly. <laughs> and just like full of ideas. And I know that I keep having to, press pause on everything because I know that I can't manage all of that work. Yeah. It's funny. My, my son is, my oldest son is really big into like dungeons and dragons and stuff. And he's kind of, he's working on his own game. Um, and, uh, and I was kind of surprised, uh, cause like he's been talking about this game forever and I didn't know if he was doing anything with it. And I asked how he came over the other day and like, I'm like, so how's the game going? And uh, he basically showed me on his uh, Kindle or whatever. He had a, he basically had a book, a whole book. Then. And I'm looking like looking through it, and like wow, there's really a lot here. So I was I was pretty impressed. There's a you know tons of world world building there and everything. And so you know who knows? Hopefully he can he can do something with it. But yeah, it was I was pretty impressed to be honest. That's rad. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, like having the input and starting to get into the community, the amount of people who create amazing stories like that and keep them within like their own games, like some of the stories that could exist beyond if they'd taken that next step into comic books or novel writing could be just amazing. And there probably are people out there yet to discover it, but uh, there's so many great story writers, like your son now has written this great story. It's like that could be a comic book. You could hire yeah. this now. <laughs> Yeah, because he's got all these, of course, he's got the different, like, races and, and what they, everything from what they, because it's like, I guess it's kind of like, a, it's Dungeons and Dragons, but it's also sort of this open world, well, maybe that's what Dungeons and Dragons is, I don't, <laughs> you, you have to pardon my ignorance, because I haven't really played Dungeons and Dragons, but just everything from what the, the characters, like, eat, or what they farm, or what, all this different stuff, I mean, it's like, wow, this is really in-depth. You know, oh, wow. so yeah, it's it was it's yeah, it's pretty it was pretty interesting. So I have to, and that was just at first glance. I kind of got to look it over, but I've done some like character sketches and stuff for some of his characters, but he's got some more. So hopefully, you know, I gotta gotta figure out a way that I can, you know, maybe do some of that and also share it online or whatever, so I can you know, so I can you know, use it as content to. So it's just not like you know, I'm just doing all this work for, for his project and everything, but that I could also use it for other things. So we'll, we'll to see what we can come up with, but. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah so let's, I, I don't know if you guys are down, but you guys want to talk about just, I mean, without giving away some of the ideas you have cooking that a collaboration would be beneficial with. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I can, I can definitely uh, say like, so one of the things that I'd like to do, there's there's two big projects that I want to get to. One is kind of like a, a tell-all about Scientology, but it would be something where I'd actually do it as a journalist. So I'd like find somebody who left that and and tell their story as a graphic novel. Because I've been reading um, uh, Joe Sacco, like he, uh, he, he did this book like Palestine and it's like brilliant and it's journalism, but as a comic. And so I'm like, I would love to do comic journalism. It wouldn't have to be that particular topic, but that just seemed like a really interesting one. Cause it's just like a rabbit hole that I constantly find myself going down, you know? And then um, another one would be uh, like, um, that's just like really pressing is like a kind of crazy apocalyptic kind of end of the world type story. Um, that's like guised as like a slice of life at the beginning and then just kind of broadens into this expansive kind of epic like action thing, which is, which would be really interesting to try to tackle because of what I've been doing is all like autobio and true life stuff. So it'd be fun to kind of dip into fiction. Those are just like two that are yeah 
that are that I'm aching to work on, but I I can't without. Right. Yeah. 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 So I don't know. I've got I've got a number of ideas. Um, uh, let's see. So one of them that I was I keep saying might be my next project is um, it's something that's tentative, tentatively called um, Hippopotamus Prime or Hip Hop Hippopotamus Hippopotamus Rhyme. And it's basically um, it's a it's an alternate nineteen uh, eighties where it's it's post uh, like a kaiju mech war and there's just devastation and everything and you know and then there's you know these pockets of ghettos and it's the same time where where so basically like New York would be totally destroyed um, and there's just tons of devastation and these old mechs that are broken and everything and and. Uh, since then, the, the people aren't really manufacturing mechs, or they're they're not, uh, you know, they're they're outlawed or something like that. But uh, kids are using them, and this is in sort of this alternate 1980s where there's also the rise of hip hop, and kids are using them to build like you know giant sound systems out of them, and and have rap battles and everything, and then and like piloting them and all this kind of stuff. And but it's all down you know, it's, it's all totally illegal and everything. Um, and then maybe they, the kaijus come back and then they have to kind of defend everyone against it. So that's one idea. And I could see working with another artist on something like that. I've got, I, I could, what's that? Sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to that now. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, that's I try not to think about it too much because I could see so many things. The other thing that I, I kind of want to do, if I could pull it off, is to tell the whole story in rhyme. Um, so uh, because I always, you know, when I was growing up, I always wanted to do hip hop, but I, you know, wasn't the best rapper or anything. I definitely, you know, I wasn't very musically inclined, but I, I could probably tap back into that. And and write some cool stuff. And if I could write the story in that in that fashion, I think. And the good thing about it, because it takes place in the '80s, so even though I don't know, I have no idea what's current in hip hop or the styles or anything. But it doesn't have to be because it can be that old school right the kind of the the birth of hip hop, which I know quite a bit about. So I can draw from that. But um, have, have Marshall make like a live read album. <laughs> oh yeah, or like uh, and yeah, have have like a compilate like a music like. Uh, some kind of, uh, you know, music that goes along with it, man, I could just totally see doing all kinds of cool stuff. So, so that's one idea. Um, I, I, you know, if I wouldn't mind re, uh, revisiting, you know, my original comic that I was doing before that, that never, that I never finished retrofits, which is basically the only thing is it it's, so much time has passed. It would have to be totally revamped because when I wrote it, it was in the nineties and it was basically uh, like this bubblegum pop group from the 1970s who vanish off the face of the earth and uh, they reappear 20 years later, you know, in the nineties and, you know, they've got, but they've got these superhero powers. They, they don't know where they've been um, or how they acquired these powers and they haven't aged at all. Um, and then they're sort of, you know, kind of that fish out of water situation where they don't understand all the new, everything that's new. But now since so much time has passed, it'd be like 40 years later. So, um, but anyway, so that's a, you know, I could probably make them, I could probably bring them up to maybe the eighties or something, but, but I don't know. I'd like that kind of, that's, I don't want everything that I do to take place in the eighties. So, um, <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, so, and I kind of like that old seventies bubblegum pop thing with like, I don't know, just like, I don't know what was big around then, but like the, you know, the Partridge family or, you know, even, even Jackson five and all that kind of stuff. But, but anyway, so there's that. And then, uh, there was another, there's another idea that I had that's another zombie story. And this one I could definitely hand, cause I've already done, you know, once I finished with Young and the Dead, I would have already done a zombie story. So it might be cool to have somebody else do it. But I, I thought it would be cool to do sort of like a Robinson Crusoe meets zombies thing where they've got a guy stranded on a desert island uh, with zombies. And, you know, he's got to figure out how to survive on his own and everything. So so I don't know. Those are those are some ideas that, that I've got that I wouldn't mind doing something with. That's awesome. Yeah, we could. How about you, Chris? want to go <laughs> um yeah there's a story which i've been working on for years uh it was i didn't really have a title or anything but it was about a, a circus a traveling circus and it was uh about 
this young girl who she was training within the circus and her family were uh, really pushing her to go into acrobatics and she went she just didn't like that and she wanted to do more of a um, sort of mystic arts and do like fortune telling and sort of learn things like that. And through that, she develops uh, these powers and she starts to funnel those powers through her music and like by playing the violin. And she just develops these powers to a point where she becomes um, too unstable and she sort of has to leave and sort of lends on this adventure to try and figure out who she is and why she has these powers. And it's, it's very fantasy based, like wizards and witches and things. And uh, yeah, I, I never developed it too far. I sort of got, um, all I knew is I just wanted to do this like sort of medievalish fantasy that just allowed me to draw wizards and creatures and monsters. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've always just been, you know, really enjoyed that sort of thing. You know, Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter, yeah. very inspired by, yeah. Um, but I love the idea of having just like this innocent child who's sort of dealing with all of these changes. That she's not only getting older, but she's having to deal with the fact that she's different and she can't control that. And um, you know, these people, group of people who bring her in as her own, and you know, dealing with those friendships of people that she's not sure whether she should trust. Whilst also dealing with like her family who wants to help her but doesn't know, and she feels very isolated in that environment as well. Um, and then I, I want to do something very sci-fi fantasy based. I sort of taking the idea and this is the concept book I've been thinking about recently is, uh, the whole idea of Dungeons and Dragons, but set more in a sci-fi, um, setting. So kind of like the idea of steampunk where you've got, um, sort of modern society using medieval mechanics. It's more along the lines of dragons and wizards and warlocks that can travel through space. And yeah, like, uh, uh, kind of, I was gonna say I like I like the idea of like technology that just doesn't progress the same way that that we know it. Like that whole steampunk yeah. is cool. That's why I kind of you know why I wanted to kind of with that whole thing. Like, what if like during the birth of hip hop there were also these giant mechs and stuff like that? Because it's just like you know, there's some familiarity with that, but it's also like, oh, this this is like it. There's there's things we know, but it's also like, oh, but there's this whole other world that just it never existed. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I did that sort of with Monkey Junk. I'm I'm trying to. I feel like I'm not doing very well, but I was really inspired by Afrofuturism. Uh, in the idea of like the way the towns are built, but they're still very suburban, but futuristic at the same time. Like if you, uh, if you've seen Black Panther, like the world they live in. Yeah. Yeah. That's a perfect example. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, that's what I had in mind for monkey junk. I was like, okay, that's what I, what I want to do is yeah. It's very futuristic, but it, you know, the people own it and the people just adapt to it and graffiti and just sort of letting nature sort of take its course with it as well at the same time. And it's really cool. So yeah, I love that idea of, um, you know, really separate contrasts merging into one is really fun. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, it's so tough to hone down too, because like I've always wanted to do like an old, uh, like mystery as well, you know, like a Victorian era, like murder mystery kind of thing just because it would be really fun to draw like London streets and stuff like, you know, in the yeah, Victorian wow. era, or just like do all that research and stuff. I don't know. There's too much, there's too much to right. do. And so I can see the value of collaborating because the speed with which you can execute must increase. I'd imagine, you know, with yeah. the team. You know. As we've been talking about this, I've been thinking about March. I know he's got like that many ideas that he wants to collaborate with people, but he wants to be able to pay them before he's able to do it. And I just imagine like if he had the money, the amount of content he'd be creating by collaborating would be insane. And I'm sure we'd probably be in the same situation if we could do that. That's awesome. Yeah. That, yeah ideas just come thick and fast sometimes and you have to shelve them. You can't, you can't pursue them. It's difficult to deal with sometimes. 
Yeah, it's tough though, because right, like, because I mean, I, a lot of people have ideas, and few people actually finish or execute them. So it's like, I think it's it is a good. I don't know. It's that's something I try to remind myself when I get tempted, you know, to like, especially on this where I'm just like, okay, I'm kind of like, I, I love this style I've been working in and stuff, but it would be nice to kind of change it up, you know. But at the same time, like what do I want a finished book or like just a bunch of ideas that I didn't really fully bake, you know? It's yeah. Tough. It's tough. Do you have a battle with the idea of just changing the style a little bit within your comic as you're going? Like if you start being inspired by other things that want to make you move away from what you're doing? Um, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I do integrate, a lot and there's subtle changes that have happened and i think naturally happen after you've gotten like 100 pages into something you know you're like once you're kind of close to that 100 page mark it's like inevitably there's some shifts you know um and there's like especially with paneling i i i part of why i've thumbnailed it as i've gone is to kind of leave it free for that like where i can see like an approach to paneling that I want to try. And like, if, if I luck out and it meets a point in the story where I can utilize a certain method of paneling that I've wanted to try, I can do it, you know? Okay. Um, but I also wanted to have some consistency, you know? Um, but it is like one of those things of like, you know, and I guess that's also one of the advantages of, of doing what I do for a living. Cause it's like, I draw in like multiple styles and create art all the time. That's in like, you know, like retro flat, like NPA poster styles and like all this other stuff. Um, and it ranges all over the place from like cartooning to like really realistic to like sketchy. And so when I get home, it's nice. There's a niceness to like being able to do the thing that I right now kind of want to at least finish, you know? in the way I kind of wanted to do it and envisioned it. But I think without that outlet, I think I'd get pretty bored. Cause you, you need to like, I don't know. I like Scott, do you kind of find that too? Like with side projects, does it kind of help you? Cause if you were to just like focus on young and the dead and that's it, I mean, I think you'd go nuts, right? <laughs> yeah, I, well, I've said that plenty of times. Yeah, I, I couldn't do that. I mean, I, 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 I would hesitate to do more than one comic book project and just focus on my comic book stuff, other than, of course, you know, the four-page anthology, something like that. But um, I, I wouldn't want to try to take on two comic book projects at once. But I have to have all these other projects. And that's why I take... Frankly, that's why it takes so long for me to put out Young and the Dead because I've got all these other things that I that I'm trying to do, whether it's designing prints or doing, you know, the the you know, whatever robot stuff, or if I'm doing, you know, the mad science stuff, all that different, all those different things. I need to do all that so I don't I don't go nuts. Yeah, Chris, what about you? Do you kind of find areas to kind of mix different styles that you're influenced by within your comic? Um, I've tried, but I'm trying to, like, like you said, there's that natural progression of change. Um, but I was going through like recently a real Robert Crumb phase and just like loved lines and just wanted to put lines on everything. Yeah. I did a few test panels. I was like, I can't do this. I can't. <laughs> I to, yeah. I had to pull away and I'm like, this is really fun. I do like it, but I couldn't, I think I'd have to gradually introduce it if I wanted to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, otherwise I just sort of push it into other projects or just um, just sketch ideas, like you know, the amount of stuff I've got on my iPad now of just ideas that are just sitting there and at least I can play with them later if I want to and that sort of gets it, it gets that um, gets that itch scratched for me at least. Yeah. And I, I generally find that's probably most of what it is. It's generally just an itch to just to flex my muscles a little bit and try something that I'm not you know, normally doing. Um, I, I did, I did do, I was trying like a new coloring style recently and uh, I approached it with a, a client that I was doing, I, you know, done a few children's books with them. I said, what do you think of this? Can we try this for the next book? And they loved it. And then I got about two pages in and I was like, oh, I wish I didn't do this now. 
and I had to keep that consistency through, um, which was great. And I learned heaps by doing it, but um, given the options, like I'd much rather go back to what I was used to. I enjoyed it more. And I, I found that generally most of the case when I do change styles, I, I miss my, my main style. I miss, you know, my usual cartoon stuff. So I always fall back to it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think like one thing I did, two was like designing into my story like two different styles that i alternate between and they're both styles i really like working in and so by the time i'm kind of sick of working in the one style i'm usually done with that section of the book and then i can move on to the next you know so it's like a little fake excitement in the process (laughs) (laughs) um but but yeah it is it's interesting that you described that itch because I had that like a, a, a year or two ago where I was just like, I really missed um, painting. And I think it's because we used to have Jeff on here and I just see him painting all the time. And I'm like, I used to paint a lot, you know, and um, just kind of wanting to like get like some board and gesso it and like see, see if I can still kind of rock the paint, you know? So I just made like a little side project and did that. And then I was like, I don't, I can't do what he does, but, but I can still paint, <laughs> you know, yeah. but it was like two were enough or three were enough. And, but every once in a while you get that itch and you're right. It is hard to kind of, um, find an outlet for it, you know, um, and not derail like an entire project, especially a bigger project that's got to have some consistency, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I th- when there's an investment in something, it's, I, I find it's easier to just put a very small amount of time and effort into scratching that itch. I think if I just was able to dedicate more time and not worry about all of the other things, like if I wasn't working and could just do whatever I want, I'd spend more time scratching that itch for a longer period. Yeah. Like, like painting, like, yeah, I, I have the same thoughts around my car. I really want to start painting, but I know if I do, I'll do maybe half of one and then that it will just sit there for months. And I'll keep telling myself I'll touch it, but I don't. If I had the time, then I'd probably sit there and actually, you know, really go through the whole process. Yeah. But that that would be another advantage to like if you know if we all had loaded wallets and could just collaborate with different artists, because then you could just hire a painter and be like, paint this story. I want to see what that looks like. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's cool though. Um. So how did you guys, like, how did you guys kind of arrange to collaborate? I mean, I know you've gone into it a little bit, but, like, how did you kind of work out? Did you guys kind of come to an arrangement at first of, like, like divvying tasks, like being like, okay, this is what I'll handle, this is what you'll handle? Uh, during the, the first lot, uh, so issues one and two, like I said before, um, very closely tied to the original script that I wrote. And then after that, we would just discuss and we would catch up quite regularly and just talk through what I was doing um, and what he was doing with the writing. Because for the for the most part, issues one and two, I was drawing it as he was writing it. Yeah. He was so busy that I was just kept catching up to him. So we were all right. Well, let's just catch up and we'll just sort of refresh on what we're doing. And for the most part, I tried to let him have as much freedom as he wanted. Yeah. Just guide him black like, well no this isn't probably how they would say that line or um let's look at doing maybe costume changes for the next issue little things like that whereas now it's it's more becoming his own story yeah he's starting to really come into his own and i think he that was a progression for him too when he was doing especially the first chapter he didn't feel like there was very much of him in there anyway he was just really adapting the script Number two was a little bit different. Now number three, it's it's just all him, um, and I pretty much just let him write the whole thing. He sent it to me, and uh, like I said, I've read it this week, and there's really not a lot I'd change. I think there's maybe a, a few little uh, just language things, just the yeah. way that I think the character would talk. Um, but for the most part, like I'm really happy with it. He understands, you know, w- because we talk so much about it he understands the story and he knows where it's going. And I, I, I trust him pretty much completely to just go for it now. That's awesome. But, but if there are changes, like, and there's, there are often disputes where I'm like, oh, 
I don't think that they should do this in the book or for what you know whatever the story needs and he'll be like no this is why and he's quite good at explaining the, uh, this is what i'm building towards and a lot of it for him is uh especially this early on it's like foreshadowing um he loves you know he's obsessed with foreshadowing which I, I think it's cool i like that sort of stuff yeah uh, and we're okay i'm like well how about we just let's just let, let's change it a little bit and we can still work within what you want to do and yeah. like okay, Cool. and then he'll rewrite it and come back and I'm like yeah cool i like that and it'll generally be a joint effort rather than me just saying change this and change it um he will push back a little bit and i like that i, I think i'd prefer that that's awesome because if he didn't then the whole idea of me getting him to write the story for me um would be redundant yeah because then i do it by myself <laughs> yeah no, that makes so it's to have someone on the outside of it and going well you know, like, and this is a guy who reads more comics than I read. Uh, you know, he understands from a reader's perspective what he would expect, whereas I look from an artistic perspective on how I would want to draw it or yeah, where I want to lead it to. And yeah, you know, that, that makes it a little bit easier as well. Like, it, it, it's almost kind of like just sending a copy of your book to a couple of friends and seeing what they think, but you know, during the actual creation process itself. Yeah. and we can make those changes as we go or as we need to that's cool that's cool. yeah so it sounds really organic too which is which is kind of ideal so yeah and it was a, like a really accidental thing we've only been friends uh, it's about seven years now but throughout those like those first few years that we met we always did these weird little collaborative things and like it started off by creating a drinking game like i had this idea for a drinking game and then he took it to the next level and then I was like, but really excited. So we just kept, you know, elaborating on this drinking game idea until we actually made this physical thing. We got it printed and, you know, we took it out with our friends and, it, you know, it was like everything, every weekend, like that's what we would do. Um, and then we would work on the next thing and the next thing and like kill the hero with sort of the longest term thing. And then, you know, eventually monkey junk. I think it was. Just, yeah, like I said, it was a really organic relationship that built on a creative spectrum. Yeah. Um, not one that I sort of expected to happen, which was really cool. Like, we have a lot of other things in common, but, you know, when we catch up, it's just, you know, we talk about these ideas and creations that we have and, you know, other things that we want to work on. Um, you know, we're already talking about spin offs for Monkey Junk and, you know, what we want to do beyond like the first six issues once they're finished and, yeah yeah it's nice it's it's just like having pulled out that the idea out of my head and just decided to sit it in a chair and sit with it you know yeah and it just grew a personality around it and then now it's my friend and yeah that's really cool yeah wow and like yeah. and you see that with other comics as well like you know some of the big stuff like who is it um zach no uh, Scott Snyder and um, Greg Capullo, you know, like they have that relationship too. Um, if you can manage that when you're, you know, collaborating with creators and building that relationship, it definitely makes a huge difference. Oh, yeah. 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 It's perfect sense. Yeah. 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 Now I need to work on getting him into excited about marketing because that's the only thing that's probably <laughs> the last thing. Like, you know, like you said before, you know, you've got that extra person to, to push and promote the book as well, um, you know. But yeah, I, I enjoy it enough I mean, anyway. Not not only that, but like I mean, you know, let's say you get a freelance gig or something, and somebody needs to booth a convention, you can split tasks. You know what I mean? Or you could hit like two conventions at the same time. Like that's pretty cool. So. Yeah, yeah. And like, and we're we're not quite there yet, but we're definitely looking forward to the idea of being able to do like sort of interstate shows and actually um, go around together or do them on our own. Um, that would be, you know, a wicked goal to, to strive for. That's rad. Yeah. Awesome. And I found too, like when he does the shows with me, he's far better at talking about the book than I am. Like I, people ask me what the book's about and I still sort of just go into a bit of shock. I'm like, oh, yeah. what is the book about? Shit. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I struggle with the pitch a lot, um, you know, and usually I'll just kind of, 
default to like self-deprecating humor, which doesn't really work too well for sales because it's like, <laughs> what is this? Oh, it's just, you know, some sappy auto bio story. Oh, okay. Well, I shouldn't be interested then. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and so that's something I'm definitely going to have to brush up on when I finish this thing up, like working on a full out pitch, you know? Yeah. I've actually, I've, I've found that problem with most writers I have worked with. Whenever they sell books, writers tend to sell books far better than the artists do. Yeah. They really know how to talk it up. <laughs> Yeah, that makes that makes sense. I mean, I guess they ha they're they're good at condensing ideas, you know, which is mm. cool. yeah. I don't know, Josh. I, I I like your even though I mean you you get you got a little bit where you you talk about you know faith and mental illness, um, but I think what really sells it for me is just your your whole idea of how is it's almost I mean the story is one thing, but also how how it comes to be and the because what I think when I think of your story is just the amount of effort and everything and how much of you goes into it. So the whole thing about, you know, a hand drawn, hand inked, everything, and then hand to you. I, I love that. I think that's, that's brilliant pitch. Cool. So I would not give that up at all. Well, I might keep that part, but I definitely yeah. need to get some plot in there. Yeah. 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 So, but I, it'll be easier. I, I'm one of those people, like I work a lot better when I have the thing and then I can like get in marketing brain, you know, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. oh, you guys think we've c covered the topic, or? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think, so. we, Chris, did we miss anything important? I mean, obviously, we should definitely mention you've been talking monkey junk a lot. Um, we should definitely drop where people can find that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, at the moment, it, it's got its own little home on the internet at monkeyjunkcomic.com. That's pretty much the hub of it. Um, otherwise, Instagram and Facebook, but they don't get used too heavily, um, mainly just when new stuff's coming out. So I try and keep most of it under wraps these days until the book comes out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, any any sort of main stuff, monkeyjunkcomic.com is the best place to go, especially if you want to get copies of the books. Um, and we, we did like these uh, alternate covers as well, like in a limited run. So they're like the only place you can get them too. So Nice. Yeah, trying to trying to copy the old Marvel comic, and it actually works. It's quite interesting. People people love the alternate co covers. It's cool. Huh. That's yeah. A good thing to keep in mind too. Um, that's really yeah. Cool. Um, it yeah, it's beautifully drawn, and it, it's a fun story. And um, I I really enjoyed the first issue. So yeah. Um, How's that? Yeah, it, yeah, it's definitely a progressive story, and we've had people come and be like, "That's a bit quiet at the beginning," but it um, definitely picks up pretty quickly after that. So, I'll have to send you a copy of number two. Awesome, yeah. Um, all right, so uh, so Scott, um, do you, oh, sorry, uh, we should also mention your your YouTube channel too, <laughs> Chris. Oh yeah, yeah. You guys can catch me at uh, Chris uh, YouTube dot com forward slash Chris McQuinlan Art. Awesome. And that's, that's linked down in the show notes as well. Um, okay, Scott. Uh, oh, well, I guess you got to wrap it up because of the mailing list stuff. Um, so you can find my stuff here on YouTube and subscribe if you haven't. And then you can check it out at quarterlystories.com and, uh, and see what, like, the stuff I've been talking about. And, um, yeah, uh, Scott, where can people find you? Where can they get on your mailing list? And then how do they get on our mailing list? Yeah, so if you want to find me, you can find me at cirkworks.com. It's S-E-R-K-W-O-R-K-S. I imagine there's probably a link in the description of this video for that. Um, and that will take you to my website where you can pick up the Comic Maker Starter Kit. If you want to create comics and you want a free digital pack of tons of really cool tools, uh, you can pick that up. Um, and uh, so that's, yeah, that's where you can find me. As far as... Um, this show, which is on Josh's channel today, uh, next week it probably will be on my channel, but sometimes it's at different times. Uh, it could be a different day. You never know, but the one way you can know is to join our mailing list, and we don't spam you or anything. We just usually about 30 minutes before we go live, we send out a uh, just uh, an email uh, with a link to where we're going to be, so you will always, uh, always won't be left out in the cold, and you'll know... Uh, how to get a whole, you know, when the next show is going to be. So sign up for that mailing list. Awesome. And that's link in the description as well. Perfect. 
Um, cool. Well, thanks to everybody who joined us in the chats. And uh, sorry about uh, the Time Warner nonsense. Uh, and uh, we will see you guys next week. Sweet. Bye. Bye. Bye.